Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, December 27th, and it is, it is our honor and privilege to be interviewing Melvin Goldstein uh, for the Jewish Historical Society. And the year is? And the year is 2016. Okay, Mel, would you tell us when you were born? I know you're a youngster. September 23rd, 1918. Okay. And where were you born? Can't tell from my accent, Brooklyn. Okay. New York. Our Brooklyn buddy. And how did your family get to America? Well, my parents were born here. Oh, they were? Yeah. So your grandparents? <clears throat> my grandparents came over, I guess, in the middle 80s, but both my parents were born here. And where did they come from? Your, your grandparents, where did they immigrate from? I, uh, I don't know what it was at that time, but the Europe has been, uh, I guess, from Russia or some part of uh, Poland. Poland? I, I would assume it's Russia, though. Yeah. Do you remember, I never did really. Did you ever know the name of the town? No. Oh, okay. So, did you know your grandparents? Yes. Yeah. In fact, uh, my grand grandmother uh, I don't know, she was ageless, but uh, she survived until uh, my children were born. In fact, uh, she must have been at least a hundred years old. Really? Yeah. Well, I hope, I hope you're, on, you're, you're on your way with those genes. I hope you make those. Yes. Because uh, I'm looking forward to coming to your birthday. Okay. You just missed one. <laughs> the other one is coming up. So, your grandparents, do you, do you know how they came here? No. Okay. And what, what, do you know what they did? Your grandparents? Uh, I did. My, okay, oh, but what about your parents? What did they do? Well, what? <clears throat> it's all, all this being recorded. I have to stop and think, you know. Well, I know you were in the electrical business, were they? Yes, my father was, uh -huh. and uh, uh, my mother was a housekeeper for a while, and when we grew up, she went back to work. Really? And that was very unusual, wasn't yeah. it? But, uh, uh, Do you remember what she did? Yes, she was a, uh, <coughs> before she was married, she was a bookkeeper when after uh, we were grown up and uh, uh, she went back uh, and worked uh, as a, not as a snow, but as a bookkeeper again. Uh -huh. But not for your father, for another yeah. firm. And what, what was your early family life? Family like, I mean, your, your family life, you had brothers, sisters, yes. how Jewish was your household? How, uh, an older sister, there's four years and four months difference between my sister and myself, and I had a younger brother who was four years and, and four months younger than <laughs> myself. Unfortunately, uh, my brother, who was a real genius and uh, went to a technical school and did all kinds of things, uh, did one experiment too many, and he was working in an experiment in a, our basement of our home, and he was electrocuted. <gasps> so I lost my brother. How old was he at that point? He was uh, 15 and a half. Oh my gosh. And <clears throat> well, that had to have been a real tragedy. So you spoke about how he had a technical education. How about you? What was your educa early education? Uh, I went to, of course, the, uh, I have to tell you a bit, Erasmus Hall High School uh -huh. in Brooklyn. I, went, I was working during the days, so I went to Brooklyn College at night. And at that time, Brooklyn College didn't have its own uh, school, but had rented spaces in office buildings down, uh, downtown Brooklyn. So I'd get through with, with work about five o'clock. Take the bus to the subway, take the subway to uh, the Borough Hall section of Brooklyn, and went to classes. And we'd go from 
to Rolliman Street to J Street. Our classes were all over the place. And uh, one day the professor of what class looked around and says, where are the half the class is missing? And someone piped up, they're at the chapel. There's no chapel, there's the Minsky burlesque down the street. <laughs> That's where half the class was. But uh, I went, <clears throat> as I say, I went to Brooklyn College and then uh, was drafted into the Army. Okay, just before we get into the Army, what, what did you major in when you were in college? What was your oh, major? Uh, I just wanted to get through, I don't remember that <laughs> Okay, but you, you got through in the, in the regular I, I four years? Through, of course, the, uh, unfortunately the war intervened, uh -huh. and so I was drafted. And, and uh, Do you remember about what time that was? I mean... Well, the, the, it was in 1940, yeah. so, I, so I was... I lived in a community with mostly uh, young marrieds, and so there were very few singles, as, and as a single at that time, I was almost immediately drafted into the army. And uh, after uh, Pearl Harbor. So this was before Pearl Harbor. This is a year, almost a year before Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. And at Pearl Harbor, I applied to our officer candidate school. I felt it was important to do that. And so I went to. Uh, OCS. Where did you go? Fort Benning, Georgia. You did. And um, so, so I spent my career, that early career in the army, I went overseas and landed uh, D plus one in Normandy, and continued right through until we met the Russians in Czechoslovakia. So how many years was that? So. I was in the army for over five years. Really? So we're not going to go into any more of your army life here because we're going to do another interview. Yeah. Okay? And you'll give it to us, right? Okay. <laughs> Good. So, um, what about your home life? Was it was it Jewish? Was it a very Jewish home? Did you celebrate no, the holidays? We observed everything. We were not Jewish. Jewish. I mean, we all. Did you go to synagogue? That's a synagogue and things of that sort, but uh, we were not overtly. Uh -huh. Did you live in a Jewish neighborhood in, in Brooklyn? Or not, was it mixed? Well, not really, no. Uh -huh. It was a mi very, very mixed. So it's about Hanukkah time now. How did your family celebrate Hanukkah, well, or did we, that? We celebrated the holidays. Uh -huh. and, uh, my mother was a fantastic cook, but you would have all the traditional foods. And uh, my mother was the eldest in her family. She had a, it was a large family, uh, and all the dinners and affairs were usually at our home. Uh -huh. We had a very interesting family. My mother's younger brother, uh, at the fifteen or sixteen, ran away to sea, and the next uh, brother. Uh, was in the army at World War One, so we had a very interesting family, all kinds of stories. And when you had your family gatherings, about how many were you? Oh, well, they kept increasing <laughs> as time went by, but we would have uh, 15, 18, we'd end up with 20 or 30 people. You would? Well, as the, so you're a particular... as the members of the family uh, uh, married and their spouses would right. come. So your immediate family was was yeah, five yeah, and then four. Five. Yeah. So that's a lot of cousins and aunts and uncles. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the the uncles, the aunts and uncles, only each only had one child, so that there weren't too many <laughs> too many children. Right. Um. Did you have any great aunts and uncles at that point? Yes, in fact, uh, the one aunt, great aunt, uh, was married and moved to Stamford, Connecticut. And that's how 
I used to, uh, when I was a youngster, they put me on a train, I'd come and spend a week up in Stanford. That's how I really? knew about Stanford. And when I got out of the army, I didn't want, I was going to go into business. I decided I wanted to get out of New York, and I knew Stanford. So I came to, that's how I came to Stanford. Really? Uh, now, at this aunt and so, uncle, what were their names, and what did they do here? Uh, well, the aunt, I never knew the uncle. He, uh, he was dead before I was born. But uh, uh, my aunt, Celia, lived in Stanford, and he had a big house. And when her husband died, this house was directly across from the old Yale and, T Yale and Town factory. Really? And she opens up, made it into a boarding house for people who worked at the factory. And I would come up and spend a week or two here in Stanford, so I, I knew Stanford very well. And when I got out of the army, that was the reason I came to Stanford. Trust me. Okay. So let's go back and then we'll come forward again, okay? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, did you have a bar mitzvah? Oh, yes. Yeah. And was it an Orthodox ceremony, conservative? Uh, my people, my family was uh, we were Orthodox to the extent that a uh, label. Mm -hmm. well, we were not uh, temple goers but, uh, per se. We'd go on the holidays mm -hmm. and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. And I had a bar mitzvah, of course. Yeah. And do you remember what it was like? No, but I have pictures of my son's bar mitzvahs. <laughs> <laughs> I remember your son's bar mitzvahs. Yeah. They were very impressive. So, how did, how did your father earn a living? Well, he was in the, in the electrical contracting business, and he was, uh, it was a fairly large firm for that time, for that period of time. Uh, in Brooklyn, and he was he managed the, the business. He was the manager of, of this uh, organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I worked there uh, part time when I was going to school. When I was going to school at night. I, I worked at, uh, at this uh, organization during the daytime as a buyer. So you would buy the electrical equipment that they yeah, needed? That's, so that's how I was... That's how you got into it? I got into the same business when I got out of the army. Okay. So when you came to Stanford, it was right after you got out of the army. So about how old were you? Oh, God. I guess I was uh, about 30. Oh, you were? In my 30s. And... You weren't married at that time, or you after were? I, I got married shortly afterward. I okay. got married in 1951. Same and year as me. Same as you. Right. And uh, Carol lived in Mount Vernon at the time, and the story was I had to make a pit stop from when I was living in Brooklyn, going to coming up <laughs> here, I'd stop at her home. So that's how you met her? Yeah. <laughs> how did you meet her? Oh, we had formed an organization in White Plains uh, of do-gooders, theoretically. Uh, young men and young women, and see, the idea was taken to help disadvantaged children. But more or less it turned out to be a marriage agency <laughs> by the time <laughs> what, we... What a great idea that is! And we take the kids out and... Uh, these kids who had mm -hmm. either broken homes or, uh, or other problems, so we'd be, be involved with the children. I mean, that was the excuse that we had. And uh, a lot of marriages came out of that. They did? Well. And you the, had, did you make friends that you kept well, throughout the, your life? The whole thing was when I met Carol, I was speaking. Did you remember? Know my friend Dave Marcus. Mm -hmm. Well, Dave and I were sitting and talking one evening at one of these meetings about going ice skating, and this little boy says, "I can ice skate too," and that was Carol. And so we did made an ice skating uh, date. We went ice skating in White Plains, and so I 
I got a friend. I got a wife, and I lost a friend. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Um, I have some water there. Yeah, okay. So you got married in 1951. Yeah. And at that point, you already had a business. And and the business was an electrical contracting business, or an electric, thank you, uh, electrical supplies. Electrical, okay. And I remember the name of it, but tell us what it was. Bell Bell, Bell Electrical Supplies. Bell Electric, right? And um, you you had that for quite a long time, and yes, then what and, happened? Uh, but my uh, father-in-law and brother-in-law. Uh, opened a business, and they they had some patents on some uh, devices. And they, although my brother-in-law was brilliant as a, an engineer and an inventor, he couldn't run a business. And uh, so at that time, I sold my business and took over this other business. It's manufactured. Uh, what was the name of that business? Dabomatic. Right. And we manufactured uh, little applicators for the cosmetic and pharmaceutical uh, trade. And and where where was it? Was well, initially we had the business at Mount Vernon, and subsequently we opened uh, branches in, in in Florida, and. Uh, we changed, that was called uh, whatever. We, we opened another business in Florida. Was that the uh, shoe polishing? to it. Was that the shoe polishing? Well, they made these applicators, which could be used for uh -huh. mostly for uh, pharmaceutical use, but some people adapted it to for, for uh, other purposes, and uh, be, shoe polish was one of them. Uh huh. And you were sort of the only ones who had that patent, right? Yeah. So, yeah, we were put very so it became there. a very successful business. Yes, it turned out to be. Yeah. And um, so you, when you and Carol met, you were already living in Stanford. So was it a given that you were going to live in Stanford, or did you live elsewhere? No. Uh, well, I was, I was commuting at that time from... Uh, my, my parents at that time had moved to uh, uh, to uh, Long Island, and I was commuting. And finally, I decided to move up here. And uh, as I say, I stopped in Medford to meet Carol. But uh, uh, we did get married, and we lived in three-room apartment. I, uh, I can't remember the name. In Stanford? In Stanford. And when we had one child, and when the second child was due, uh, we decided it was... It was Bracewood Lane, wasn't uh, it? Bracewood Lane, yeah. right. And so uh, I, I, I had an insurance uh, agent who lived on Newfield Avenue, and he came over one day and said, Mel, I have a map. I just bought 11 acres from Newfield, I guess it would be. Pepperidge down there. He said, if you're interested, you can pick out a piece of property. He showed me the map where I picked out this thing, and it was... Was it this house? There was nothing. It was just woods. The road ended right here. There's a stone wall that goes across. And there was no, nothing here. This was, this was all woods. And he bought 11 acres, as I say, from Newfield. <coughs> Uh, and uh, so I picked out this thing and we uh, started the build. What year? 1951, I guess it was. Well, it would be, a, you got married in 1951, so, so had you had Howard at that point? Uh, I have <laughs> pictures which I'll show you, but uh -huh. anyway, uh, uh, so we built the house. I was our, my, the own, my own contractor, we had to clear this whole area, it was all wooded, and we found that when they 
start to excavate that we hit water. We had so we had built uh, a special foundation, waterproof, and so on. And we built the house, and uh, then uh, and, and at that time David was born, and so we. The pressure was on, which he had to get out of that three-room three apartment, so he moved in here and was able to get a, a certificate, certificate of occupancy and moved in. And was, the, was the house finished? It wasn't completely first. Every morning Howard would wake up and he'd say, who's banging now? Because <laughs> the, the carpenters were still working. So you probably moved, uh, so Howard was a couple of years old Howard when you moved was, here? Uh, two and a half years old, and yeah. David was born. Uh -huh. uh, three years difference between right. the two. So, you were here, but the rest was just empty land at that point? Yes, uh, they built that house across the street, <coughs> and then uh, they built the road and only went 300 feet down to the end, and there was a turnaround. And uh, where would that have been? Where was the turnaround? Right, 300 feet from here, oh. from, this, from the wall that's around okay. here. And subsequently, uh, people bought lots uh, adjacent to this that they cleared the land. And uh, do, you, do you remember how long you lived here before that started happening? We were here for about uh, a year and a half before. Uh, the, I, I don't think there are any new name. Oh, uh, just can't think of his name. Uh, before the other people start buying, buying pieces of property and building houses. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't very long before you had a whole neighborhood here. Well, it was just up to. Uh, up to the corner, I turned around at the. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the street wasn't uh, wasn't cleared yet. So Sanford Lane was here before Pepperidge Road. Well, so Sanford Lane ended at this wall, uh -huh. and then, as I say, we extended it 300 feet. And I can't remember exactly when they extended it, uh, cut through to go to uh, uh, yeah. to the end of the road. <clears throat> so. Um, one of the things that I didn't really find out, your, your parents were born here. Do you, yes. do you have any idea? You said your, your uh, grandparents came. You thought it was in about the 1880s. Well, my parents were born in uh, 1888 or something like that. So, so they were uh, here so before they then. come here about uh, 1870, something like mm -hmm. that, about 1875. Because, as I say, both my parents were born here mm -hmm. in the 1890s. When, when you moved to Stamford uh, and you were married, uh, do you remember like what stores were here and who, who the merchants were and anything about that? I don't recall. Huh? Very few. Yeah. How about your competitors? Who were your competitors? <coughs> yes, I, my competitor was the Marley Company. Uh -huh. Do you recall that? Were you related at all to them? No. 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 And um, as you were growing up in Brooklyn, and as you moved to Stanford, did you experience any anti-Semitism? No. You did not? No. Not here and not there? No. And when you moved to Stanford, um, what part, what did you partake of of the Jewish community? Because I know how active you have been, you know, throughout your adult year, I years. I wasn't active at, at that time. I was too busy raising a family and, uh, and running a business. Uh -huh. So I didn't get involved until much later on. Then okay. I became active in Federation. Right. So how about telling us a little bit about that? Pardon? How about telling us a little bit about that? Well, the, the uh, Jewish Federation at that time we just started. Uh, I can't recall.
call names, but uh, uh, I don't. I have I have a list of uh, the original uh, president. I, I I was the fifth fifth president. So you could, Do you remember who was just before you? Then if you if you cut that off and give me one second, I can bring all, all this information for you. Just tell us a little bit more about uh, the kinds of things you did when you were active in uh, uh, Federation. What, what were the sorts of things that you got started? Well, uh, we, st <clears throat> we started uh, different uh, the, the agencies that you have now were just in their infancy at that time. And so uh, we supported them, and of course, part of the part of the federation was to get raise the funds for these various organizations. And as I say, early on there were so few in Stanford, but then eventually more and more mm -hmm. came into being. And so that uh, uh, as our budget uh, increased and our solicitations increased, we were able to fund these various organizations. And, and probably the, or, the organization itself increased. Well, tell us about when you went to Washington and where did you speak? What was the occasion? Well, on behalf of uh, the uh, Russian Jewry, uh, trying to get the Russian Jews to uh, enter the United States. Uh, so what were you speaking to the State Department? Well, you... this is, we had a big rally, uh -huh. and there were thousands of people there. And then I did, did speak, uh, as I say, at, at these tremendous rallies. Everyone who was invited, uh, uh -huh. the leaders of the community, uh -huh. of these various communities, got up and spoke. But. Uh, I'm trying, but my recollection isn't okay. that great at this point. Okay. What about, I mean, I know all the things, you've been very involved in the Stanford community. I know you were involved with the Jewish Community Center, weren't you? No, not with the Jewish Community so much. Center, no. Okay. But I know that you were, you know, you and Carol and the boys went to Israel very, very frequently. Yes. Tell us about what you did there. Well, that's one of our, uh, our greatest pleasures. We would go, uh, I would go almost every year, and uh, Carol and uh, the boys would join us. We'd fly over, and we have very dear friends, and uh, we we're <coughs> very much uh, involved in uh, furnishing uh, a synagogue for uh, one of the communities. As I say, uh, we uh, made very good, very good friends, and we traveled back and forth, covered Israel quite a, quite a bit. Uh, I have some wonderful, you know, memories and pictures I could show. But, but you you founded something there. Tell us about that. Actually, I could just show, you know, it's hard to do this over the, uh, on, a, okay. on this basis, but I, I could show you the various pictures of the, mm -hmm. some of the things that we, uh, that okay. we uh, supported. Right. Okay, one so the, the we'll, most come, we'll come back was, to that. One of the most important things was, uh, uh, Bill, it's called uh, El Elia. Yeah. Well, you, were, you traveled with us, you know. Uh, I think when we traveled together, no, it was before it was before yet. you got started with that. Yes, you remember Matty, though. Of course I do. <laughs> Our guide, we had this wonderful guide. Matty. Yeah. And uh, and you, you remained friendly with him throughout all these years. Yes, for many years. Whenever we'd go, but he, he passed away just... Uh, oh, I didn't know that. I guess this, this past year, uh -huh. but we're in con constant contact with them. Um, so we saw your medals. 
we saw your medals, so we know uh, you were involved in the uh, Second World War. You told us you were drafted. Uh, where did you serve? And you know, tell us a little bit about your Army life. And um, well, I think I mentioned before, I went into the community with a lot of the young married, so that as a, as a single, I was drafted uh, almost immediately after the uh, Roosevelt signed with the law. And uh, I went to Fort Benning, Georgia, did my infantry training there, and then when the about 10 months later, the war broke out, and so I uh, applied and was accepted at the infantry school, and I got my, after 30 days, I got my commission, and I uh, retrained for a period of time here, and uh, eventually uh, uh, I, I went across it. Uh, and landed in Normandy at D plus one, and uh, it was exciting. It was exciting? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was involved, we were involved at, at the Bulge. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, continued on until we met with the Russians at, in Czechoslovakia. Did you get your medals for the Battle of the Bulge? I got it for, uh, uh, not for individual, uh, uh, the medals are for individual actions, but they're for, uh, for a period of, uh, yeah. well, I don't know how, uh, how to explain it, but uh, after the actions were, uh, I was, uh, Awarded several several medals. Anyway, military actions. Yeah, <laughs> at battles that you were. Yeah. In. Well, after that, I didn't stop uh, stop the war to give you a medal. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it was it was the result. I think what we'd like to know is which battles were you in that resulted in you getting some of those medals. Well, I, I said from I, from the very beginning the. Introduction to Normandy, where the landing was. Me. We fought our way in right after the after the landing. We came through some uh, villages that were destroyed, and the civilians had been moved out. They clearing out one house, pushing the Germans out of one house, and came across these little wooden shoes. It's hard to believe that children could wear this, but they're well, they're well worn. So these wooden shoes were worn by a child working around the house. I carried this in my pack until I was able to ship them Amazing. home. Amazing. They're in one, wonderful shape. One of the mementos that I carried with me for a long time. Yeah. So Mel, you went through a lot in the uh, in the army. Um, how did it affect your life? Do you think, or did it? Hey, to a, to a, to a degree. It's in the past. I yeah. There are all kinds of memories, mm -hmm. and uh, there's some good, some bad. Yeah. One one of the things I did make sure of doing when we captured German prisoners, I would light them up. And the first thing we would tell them, Ich bin Jude, to show these Germans that a Jew, that a Jew captured them. At that point, you were a captain. I, that, well, I, yeah, at that point, I, got, I became a captain. And how did they react? <laughs> they were not very happy you know, until we, we shipped them out. But I have so, you know, all kinds of memories of that. We fought through the bulge and uh, finally ended up meeting the Russians in, in Czechoslovakia. And how did that go? I have some pictures to show you the yeah. dancing that. Uh, okay. And uh, we found a lot of Russian uh, prisoners that we were able to release. 
Oh, really? So, uh, they were in German uh, prison camps. Uh, they were in the German, yeah, they were in German prison camps. When we got there, we were able to release them. Did you get to any concentration camps? No, I didn't get to them. Yeah. Was the bulge as cold as it appears in the footage? I'm sorry. The, was it as cold in the Battle of the Bulge as it appears on the documentaries I've seen? It was cold. <laughs> it was cold. I wore everything I could think of. <laughs> and you were still cold. <laughs> still cold. Yeah. Um, look, we know that you've been very involved in the community. You had a very active business. You were certainly very involved with your family. When you had spare time, what did you like to do with it? <laughs> i tell you the truth, I, I, I can't recall. Yeah. Well, I know that you're a very good photographer, so... It took, oh, we, oh, the thing in our spare time, we were very, very fortunate. We had wonderful parents, both of us, Carol's parents and my parents, and the best thing that they could they could do was to kick us out of the house and, and take over either Harry and Sophie, Carol's parents or my parents. And so that's how Carol and I were able to do a lot of traveling and uh, uh, as you know we did a lot of traveling with you. Right. What were some of your favorite trips? Uh, I guess uh, South Africa. Uh -huh. Did you get involved at all with the Jewish community in South Africa? We we did, yes. Uh huh. We, we met Jews all over the place. Well, when you traveled, did did you kind of seek out synagogues? No, I didn't, we didn't no. actively seek. It out. just happened. So listen, I have, you've lived a long life, and you've seen a lot of inventions. Which ones do you think are the most amazing? I, I really couldn't say. Yeah? I couldn't say. Do you use a computer? Yes, uh, to an extent. I'm not uh, uh -huh. computer literate. I have a uh, very... Uh, my, my children are very involved. Okay. Howard, that's how it's right now. Uh, business. He's a, he's a computer. He's a computer person. Okay, so do you have any advice that you might give to future generations? Just live to the fullest and give where you can, take care of your fellow man. Which you certainly have done, in, in, to, in, you know, to a great degree. Um, so I've thrown a lot of questions at you. Have, is there anything that I've left out that you want to talk about? Um, Things I left out are, are best left out. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt no, I really have nothing to add. Yeah. Well, Mel, thank you. This thank has you. been really wonderful. And uh, we want to get together with you and talk about your Army experiences a little bit more when you're ready. Okay. okay. Whatever. Presented to Distinguished Past President Melvin Goldstein. With respect and gratitude, United Jewish Federation of Stamford, September 26, 1993. So that would be it's the United Jewish Federation, the annual meeting, 2007. And it's honoring their past presidents. That's correct. On top are the first four presidents. And then down further are some of the more later presidents. You want the names? The first one is? Saul Horton, I think, isn't it? Second? I think it's Bob Schreiber. I can't quite see. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to move it, but I can't and see. And the third one? That's Bob Schreiber. And the, the, that uh, one? And who's this that? is Charlie Rosenberg. Charlie Rosenberg. And this is, uh, who's the president of... Uh, Federation now, what's her name? Her husband. Yeah, he's my doctor. <laughs> he's your doctor? Uh, okay. To the Goldstein family, Mel, Carol, Howard, and David, with heartfelt gratitude from the Ethiopian community of Fula, Israel, January 2004.
five. Building uh, just bare, and uh, they would give them the ark, and then they had to raise the money to furnish it. So Carol and I uh, furnished the synagogue, and these were our friends. And when we went to the the opening service, they allowed Carol to sit with in the front with the men. So that was a, a first. But uh, so we were able to furnish the pews and the other things for, for the community. But we were very much involved with the Ethiopian community.